Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Can I speak to Damon, please? Yes, speaking. Damon, it's Jason Curtis speaking from Cape Town, South Africa. How are you? Jason, is it? Yes, it is. Hi, hi Jason. Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Good. Are you free to chat for ten minutes? Yeah, yeah. I hear you're in the studio. What are you up to? No, no, I'm not. Ah. <laughs> I was going to say, you just finished an album. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be back in soon. Uh, no, no real rush yet, but I'm, I'm constantly sort of writing at home, which is where I am. Now. Okay. I just got back from... Got back from a weekend away in Wales. Okay. Got a caravan. So. Uh, lovely, lovely. Yeah. I was. Um, I actually got to speak to you. Must have been at least a year ago when you were sort of bobbing around the countryside. Yes, at, on the last. On the last. I remember. Yeah, I was, on, I was at the front of my tour bus. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, we kept on being cut off because I think you were going going through tunnels and stuff, yeah. That's right, yeah. But, um, yeah, good to speak to you and congratulations on the new record. Thanks a lot. Um, as I say, it's a, a welcome return, I think, and um, I was actually I was watching... If one of these I was wondering if one of these entries would be you again. I... <laughs> so, God, it's him again. <laughs> No, I mean, I've not done many interviews with uh, South African journalists, so I was wondering if one might be so. Yes. No, and, uh, and, and happily so for me, anyway. <laughs> But um, no, as I say, um, great new record. I have to I have to admit. And uh, as I say, um, I was watching. I was actually watching Entertainment. I think it's called Entertainment Now. Uh, the weekend on satellite, and there was an interview with you, um, where they had an insert. And, and I think your comments about the new album as well. If if, if nobody else likes it, likes it, it's it's their own problem. It's uh, certainly not yours. Which I, I thought was rather apt. <laughs> Well, I, I sort of always feel like, uh, and I can't complain about the amount of success that I've achieved in the last five, five or six years. But, and, uh, but it still, still kind of seems like I'm running uphill a bit and trying to uh, convince people all the time. And, and I've definitely achieved a, a, great, a great amount. But like, like with this new album, domestically in England, it just, it just feels like. It's just never quite going to break through. I mean, I, I, but I think in a, in a strange way, I'm probably in a stronger position than than I realised. Mm. To, to still be around and not have a, I've never really had a, a great massive breakthrough hit hit record or mm. single. And uh, I think I think people just it's, it's an overall entity that people see me as, and, and, I, and I'm allowed and able to still release records. And I, th I think there's a certain fan base that's established and people are interested in what I do and, and people, other people are coming on board gradually all the time so uh, and it's not about making money mm. I mean I've kind of achieved that sure that's what I wanted to achieve sure sure I, I can honestly say that it's, it's just about I really I, I, I just think there's so much rubbish about there's so much music about music and art that doesn't really care and I, I, I think I do so I, I, I'm just trying to convert people a little bit to something that, that has a bit more meaning but, uh, so that, that's, what I, that's, what, that's what I say when I shouldn't still be feeling like that I, sh I should be more relaxed so yeah. generally I am but I, I still feel like I'm, even, even after all this time I'm still a bit of the underdog yeah uh, which is strange because, I mean, I think the UK anyway is notorious for sort of championing the sort of underdog when, you know, when they're new and fresh and sort of obviously trying to um, be the ones to point out what's going to be the next big thing. And I think you, you had sort of a taste of that, I think, initially, you know, obviously with the Mercury Award and all of that. So, I mean, you were sort of arguably sort of flavor of the month in, in that circle. And then and then you, you carried on doing it. And I think, you know, almost as if people didn't expect you to be able to maintain, which you... you you know, you've clearly done and done again. I think that's where the problem lies. I think, um, I think, I think people expect you to have had a major fall by this mm. point, mm. Um, or at least there's one coming up. And uh, I mean, I, I can't say that will never happen, but I honestly don't. I, I just feel still, still as I wouldn't say hungry because that sounds like I'm, it's not it's not the right word, but it, it, I'm just still as committed to and, and as. Uh, Excited about the music I might, I might be able to make. It's, it's, it's still, I still haven't fulfilled what, what, it, what it is I was setting out to do. Right. Whether it was to write the best song or whether it was to just make consistently good albums, or you know, I still think that I've, I've not really done enough yet. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I mean, what is? Because like, there has to be a challenge for you, isn't there? I mean, first and foremost. 
Yeah. Mm. I think I think for me it's just that uh, making music is, is a challenge in itself. It, it, it's something I find very challenging just 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 within itself. Make, making music is, is difficult. Making good music is even harder mm. uh, than making music that reflects you mm. properly, reflects who you are, and also changes who you are at the same time. Mm. Each time you start a new record, mm. you, you don't want to suddenly start. I, I couldn't. It wouldn't be very good if I, if I suddenly said, right, "I'm going to make a, a hip hop album, or I'm going to make a, an electro record, or or a, or a heavy metal album." I could easily do any of those things. Yes. But uh, what the what the, 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 the harder thing to do is to make albums that, that still progress, that, that still shift in a direction that, that you find yourself in a different place, but, but it still reflects the artist that you are. So the people who liked you before would hopefully get on to what you're doing now. Sure. I think this new album, the new album does have a very different feel to, to Have You Fed The Fish. And mm. It's weird that a lot, a lot of people think this album's better. Or, or people that like Have You Fed The Fish, yes. and there didn't, there didn't seem to be many, to be honest. Uh, seem to think this album much better, and, uh, and people, but people who, who like Have You Fed The Fish don't seem to like this album. Okay. Like, have You Fed The Fish seem to like this album. It's, it's weird. I, I just think it's, it's, it's the strength of the two of the albums is that they are different. Yes. They are next to each other in terms of my release schedule. People should appreciate that, really, but some people don't. So, but you're probably being accused of almost testing your audience, you know, to the point of saying, okay, well, let's see if they buy this, you know, if they will they buy into this more than anything else, and they're like going, you know, well, not that that is the, the motivation, but as much as you, you know, you push the the boundaries with yourself, you also want your audience to move with you, so you will lose some, but then you will gain some, as you say. Well, the great the great challenge of all is to be. Uh, I can't fit myself. Well, it's not the best way of putting it, but the greatest challenge is to be commercial without being commercial. Like to make a, if, if I could have a, a commercially accepted album that is definitely not commercial yes. within itself, mm. if that makes sense. Mm, absolutely. Like that, that's probably what what I'm always aiming at mm. is to try and turn people on on a commercial level onto something that isn't. Try not fall into the trap, for example, of just writing songs that will, will sound good on radio, which sure. a lot of people, a lot of bands do. And it, so I think the strength in this new album is that it is a real record. It's, it's kind of like an old school. The, the, the overall idea I had for it was like, and the cover of the sleeve re represents this too. Mm. It's like it'd be, it'd be one of those records you might find in a second-hand store or a thrift shop and mm. Um, mm. discover it, and it'd be like a, an undiscovered treasure kind of thing. Yes. That may, may have been an old record that nobody quite got at the time, and, and, it, and it sounds good later on. But I, I, you can't attempt to write that way. But that, that was the idea I had. Like it was, it was a classic thing. It was something untouchable and un, uncriticizable. And uh, yes, <laughs> time to beat the it critics. Can't. It's impossible to do all, all those things. But mm. that, that, that's what, as an aesthetic, I was aiming for. Mm. Uh, I think that's what I'm always aiming for: is, is to try and sidestep what's happening. Around you, mm. around yeah, because because it's, it's it's you watch if you watch MTV all the time, and I, I do watch it and enjoy quite a lot of it, but sure. it, it, it beats you down. It does uh, popular culture beats you down? You just think, why am I a part of this? I don't really. Well, I'm you're not really. That's the thing, yeah, because you because you don't you don't fit. I know, and, and then I want to fit. Yeah. As soon as I do, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like it's a constant pull and push thing. It's like, oh, why, why am I not as accepted as, as that band that just gone to number one? And, yes. Uh, and then at the same time, you feel glad that you're not. So it's quite distressing. Sure. And because popular culture doesn't really know what its own identity is, you can't exactly go there to get it because, you know, it's it's being dictated by by you and things around you. But um, obviously, some things have a stronger pull than than others. But I think for the most part, your fan your fan base is grateful that you do what you do because um, it's it stands outside of that. And I think in many respects that that's that's what makes them engage because it is refreshing and it is and it is challenging. Um, I think to to that even yeah, it's challenging. For, it was a, you know the first time I put the record on, it was a challenge for me to you know to listen to it because it wasn't it wasn't as immediate as switching on you know MTV, <clears throat> by example. Um, but you know three listens in, um, I was grateful for the the fact that I that I needed to unpack the songs and I needed to unpack you know um, all of it in order 
for it to translate. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, I've, I've kind of got this mental image at the back of my mind that what's happening with my career is that it's sometimes frustratingly slow. I haven't had this breakthrough mm. as a huge hit, or mm. <clears throat> sometimes I feel like, why not? And my mum and dad get <clears throat> upset that they don't think I'm getting as much credit as I deserve. And then along the way, I've had, I've had moments of glory, mm. like the Mercury Prize early on, mm. a few other plaudits, and an album selling slowly and steadily. So there's mm. mental images of this of this uh, people that follow what I do forming this concrete base as opposed to other artists that sell millions of records overnight yeah. and it's a huge platform but it's made of sponge mm -hmm. uh, so what, my, mine's a much shallower platform but it's actually made of concrete yes it'll stay. You know, and that, that's kind of like what you want to be really but <coughs> traditionally an artist like Bob Dylan or, or Neil Young or or Springsteen, or any, any of those mm. artists that have been around a long time. Exactly. I, I, I suppose I'm in a position where I can't predict the future, but if I was to, I, I would hope it would be that, that I'd still be around and look back on these albums as like solid foundations. For, well, that's the what, thing, and I think they're all in. The, yeah, they're they're all essential parts of of your makeup. I mean, every every album, yeah, you know, gives I think gives you know, the listener a little more insight into you know in, into that space and. It can't be told on one album or even on two or on three. And as you say, you, you, what you'd like to do is be able to unpack this indefinitely so that you have a career, not just a you know, flash-in-the-pan success. Mm. Mm. But it, it inevitably reaches this crossroads, which is where I'm at, where I, I, I sort of start to feel, oh, no, I think I've lost the plot. <laughs> people, aren't, people aren't following me anymore. Maybe I've... I've reached that mid-career career position. I've, I've already become Paul Weller. Mm. But, <laughs> <I> like, uh, <laughs> and that's, that, that's meant as a compliment to Paul. Yes, absolutely. After his, after his creative, massive creative years with the jam and the spell counsellor, he became a solo artist that was, that was looked at as an old man. I think, I think these days it happens much quicker, that cycle, mm. where... Especially domestically, I'm kind of like I've, I've been around long enough now to be somebody that all these new artists have, have been listening to mm, for a few mm, years. Mm, it's mm. really not that long period of time. Sure. And I, and, I, and I meet all these new bands, and they say, "Oh, I really like what you do," and I, so I get all this praise from my peers. Yes. And then, but, but it doesn't get reflected in in the sales, and, and that, these kids that grew up on my music in inverted commas mm. grew up. Mm. They're actually selling more albums than me, and it's, it feels a bit of a strange place to be. In, but mm -hmm. it's not bad, you know. It's, no, sure. It means, but I, I think too. I mean, you know, to to your to your credit as well is the fact that you're with a label that I think that understands that. You know, they quite clearly state that. Um, obviously, it's important that yeah you know, that you that I mean this is your this is your livelihood, so that it should generate some income for you. But the, but that's not the number one drive, um, and that it's almost to say that you know you you had success early on, so it, in a way. Now you're sitting and you're feeling a little cheated because, well, not cheated, but just that, you know, it, it started off so well and then it sort of, it's now hits a plateau. Now it's like, you know, um, yeah, yeah. but the label certainly, I think, accepts that. And they're going, um, I think, had album one and two not done what they'd done, you'd still be signed to the label and they'd still be, you know, because they, they appreciate the fact that you almost, you, you don't, they just say you you could make a rock record, you could make a hip hop record, but but you choose not to because this is the kind of music that you wanted to make, and both your label and your fans that you have appreciate that, and from that popular culture at some point will tap in again, and that's when you get that commercial wave again, um, which I always believe is. I suppose ultimately you just have to turn in your work. That you, that, you, that you know you know even if they completely missed the point at the time they released it even if you kind of know at the back of your mind that this isn't going to isn't going to change my world in terms of an overnight success that's, yeah. that's sort of more fulfilling but I can, I can, and touched on it lyrically as well in, in, in the like this is that new song I told you about 20 years ago mm. you know a reference a reference to me saying Time is irrelevant, and this this could be 20 years ago. It could be 20 years mm. now, because what I've, what I've zoomed in on, what I've what I'm highlighting is, is that this is what I'll still be doing yes. on a different scale, or, yes. level, or, or a different part of me will be doing this same thing. So it, it doesn't matter whether it's now or then, mm. or in the future. And I think album on album, that's what you're applauded for. You know that 
that there is consistency in that in that and there's consistency in the in, in in your growth as a musician because i think any artist that you whatever you're going to put your name on to you you I ultimately want to be proud of it regardless of you know, how you know I mean you know how, how it's commercially picked up well it, it, this one was a strange album to make as well because it was well knowing that uh, it was my last album for, for, for Beggar's Bank for itself. Mm. Yeah, it was the last one in my deal <coughs> uh, there, there was no sign of it was a point of time again so mm. in the meantime I signed another, a new deal mm-hmm. and I, which starts from the next album brilliant so I, so I was um it's a, it's a good future yes. to have in terms of what I can do next. Yes. The scope of my have. Yes, yes. But a lot of the lyrics in this album reflect the fact that it, it is a transitional period. It, I am moving on. I'm, whilst I'm sad, I'm, I'm hopeful. And there's no grudges yes. to be said in uh, what's happened in the past. There have been disappointments. Sure. A lot of... Uh, there's been moments of glory, there's been disappointments, and uh, I'm just trying to remain philosophical about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as you say, it's, it's all part of the journey, and I mean, again, uh, almost autobiographical <laughs> in, in yeah. many respects, as you say, both lyrically and uh, and uh, and musically, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting. Are you going to be signing directly to EMI, or will it be Parlophone or one of the smaller labels, the sub labels? Uh, directly to EMI, actually. Brilliant. The, rest, the, the deal was signed in, in December. Okay. Still making this record. It's straight. <laughs> what they call a future deal. Yes. Which came, came into effect in June. Okay. Uh, a certain amount of months after I delivered this record, I was there. So I'm technically fine with EMI now. So hence, the, hence the reason why you'll be going back into the studio sometime soon. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know when I'll do that. Yes. It'll probably pan out that I won't do it till, till maybe January, but what I, what I want to do on the next album is try and make it in a, in a couple of weeks or a month yes. to try to prepare the songs a bit more mm. <coughs> rather than write them in the studio as I go so I'm, I'm writing songs at home as usual yes. uh, try, try and perhaps play it uh, with a band I mean the, largely this last album was done with a, with a, with a trio yes. and then we added overdubs but it, the, the bulk of it was done as a trio okay. uh, live okay. so That's I'm lovely. trying to get more towards that making records Spontaneously, uh, a almost a lot more in advance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just playing them live, and taking the best takes, like like bands do. Because I never have that luxury of doing that. I've I've worked as a solo artist, and, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I probably won't have time to start this record, mm. this record this year. Mm, mm, mm. It depends. Depends when I, if I get a break. And then you'll see what will happen is that <clears throat> your first album for EMI will probably land up um, elevating every album that you did for Beggars. You know, it's always the case when, when artists move. Yeah. <laughs> that should be great for them and great for me. For sure, for sure, because I think that day is yet to come, as you say, that, that, that true realisation of, of, of the art that is your music um, has been appreciated by, you know, um, by you know, a, a, a relatively strong fan base, but in commercial terms, I, I do believe that that day is yet to come, and by that point, I think it'll be um, comfortably on your terms. I think if and when it if and when it does move to a different level mm. of appreciation, I mean, mm. certainly been very good at it now, but I, I, I've achieved the profile of a, what what you might call a celebrity, which is yes. the country, yes. which out, outweighs what. What I actually achieve and fail, so it starts to feel a bit weird. Mm. So, if and when it does happen, at least it will feel like it's deserved as opposed to an overnight thing. Yes. I think people, people might appreciate that, and, and I'll feel like it's deserved as well. Yeah. And if it doesn't happen, if it, if it continues on the level it's at, that's uh, fine too. But it feels slow, I thought it just feels a bit slow at times. I think you just. When I play live, it's, it's incredible wherever I play live around the world. Mm. Is, is, is that not a, a case of you being more more critical of yourself and and what your expectation is? I don't, not not particularly. I, I just I just kind of judge it by what other people's success as well, like, like my peers. And I'm, mm. well, I'm not you know I'm not sure that this landed in the right place because because those those people seem to be achieving a bit more than me. So mm. it makes you, makes you feel like you have underachieved or maybe you've done something wrong. 
I'm at, maybe you're not quite good enough, but mm. but that is, that can also be inspiring to make you think. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna be better next time. Mm. But ultimately, I do look at the record like the, the current one and think, well, I, I actually really like it. I well, that, and, I'm sure. and that's the most important yeah. thing, surely. Yeah, mm. yeah it's made, I mean, I don't want to make it sound like it's a, a negative thing. It's just it's just a thinking out loud thing, and it something I'm aware of. And, and I think it can only be healthy because, uh, like you said, I mean, I, I had this success early on. Mm. I was spoiled by it. Yes, I think. Ex yeah. Expecting a Mercury Prize nomination with every album because yes. I think they're all as good as the first album. So if that one won it, then surely the others should be in there. Too. Yes, in some cases. That's not the way it works. Yeah, in some cases you would probably argue that, you know, the, the later albums were stronger comparatively. Yeah. 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 Stronger in certain, stronger in certain ways. Yes, it? yes, yes. I think the new one, the new one's stronger in, in terms of it being together and concise and not too eclectic. I, I used the phrase uh, that this this new album sort of feels like it's different shades of the same colour as the poster, trying to be the rainbow. Mm, 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 mm. Which is what I've tried to do in, in the past, trying, trying to cram in too many different colours. But then maybe maybe that's the lesson too with with your approach to the music as well is that instead of it, it, as much as you want it to be you know arguably all things to all men it it, it 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 can never be that it can be a shade of that album on album. I think that comes with a bit of maturity mm. learning your craft, mm. learning what you're good at, mm. and, and being being willing to lose a few people along the way. Sure. By, by not giving them what they want, you know, but but ho ho hopefully it comes full circle and that those people will see it. And think, oh yeah, I missed it that time. Yeah. I, I do it all the time. I, I miss I miss out on music yes. all the time because my timing wasn't right. Yeah. I hear it again. I think why did I why did I not get that? Yes, I'm the same. Yeah. Recently it happened with um, what's his name uh, from Pink Floyd, uh, Sid Barrett. Uh, yes. Yeah. Because <clears throat> people over the years have said, oh, do you, you must do you like Sid Barrett. You must listen to. Yes. No, not really. And recently, Jimmy Jimmy Goodwin from the Dubs played me this record. Yes. With Barrett. Yes. We were driving to Wales. And yes. I was like, wow. What's that? And it's a record I've had in my collection for years and never listened to. Right. Because I must have put it on at some point. I thought, ah, mm. not ten years ago, and, and it didn't really connect. And I hear it again now. I was like, wow, that's the best thing I've ever heard. Yeah. You know, these couple of songs from that. The album where he's kind of on the floorboards in that. I don't even know the title. I'm trying to think of the title because I've I actually yeah I, I, I had that record too. <laughs> I'm trying to think what it's so called. clever. I mean the arrangements and the, the time signatures. And mm. the, it was just incredible. I was like wow because I mean that's what happens. You you, you 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 grow and you change and you and you look you look for different <coughs> things in in. in you look for different values in the same things you've been looking at for yeah. years. And yeah. You see different things. And that's kind of what it's like to be making the music. You, 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 the next album, I want to try and stick to the Bradley John Boyd blueprint, but, yes. but, but pull out different avenues in it and say, oh, I didn't do that yet, I didn't try this. And, uh, but that's great, though, because, I mean, if anything, it signals it signals to you that... <clears throat> Yeah, that um, that this is a long path, and this isn't. You know, I mean, if you had run out of ideas, or if you were rehashing, you know, album one, you know, over and over and over, then, you know, yeah. I think you you would have a bigger crisis than the one that you, you know, that you currently sit with. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more interesting to find yourself in this kind of position of. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, there's, a, there's a greater challenge, even 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 than, achi than, than achieving your first success, which yeah. is a huge challenge. It's like doing your, you know, doing your O levels at yes. school, and then yes. think, thinking that was the hardest thing ever. And then you come to your A levels. Yes. You're doing less of them. But there are it's more detail. <laughs> even harder. And that's the way it was hard before. Yes. It was, it, it, to, to progress in life, that's what it's about. To, to make records over a 20-year period, it's going to be like, well, the stuff I find e I found hard then yes. is easy now, but. It can be the opposite as well. The stuff that came easy then is quite hard now. Yes, yeah, yeah. But I think that's your saving grace is that at least you're aware of it. So I think that that you'll never find yourself in that position. Well, exactly. It's good that I can talk about it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. This, this is what makes it hard. This is what makes it fun. Sure. And it'll never stop being no. uh, or hard at the same time. No. 
hopefully, and, and you just keep shifting around it and finding ways of cracking it. Sure. And I think it's great because, I mean, if you're ever accused of being self-indulgent, then let it be so, because I think for that, um, many more people will be grateful. Yeah, well, thanks. Well, David, thank you. I know that I've um, used up my, my time. Um, but thank you so much for, for chatting to me. I uh, look forward to talking to you again um, if on your next record. If, uh, okay, thanks a lot, Jason. Yeah, it's good to speak to you. I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll be... I, mean, I don't know if there's any plans to ever come out there. It should be, really. Yes, I think so. I think there's... Well, with the label now, as I say, um, since I spoke to you last, the label has, has, has changed hands as far as distribution is concerned and, and, the, and the guys who are running it now are, are very committed to the label that they actually even had Martin Mills out here a couple of months ago. So, um, right. and, um, on the XL side of things, uh, Basement Jacks are coming out here in, in September, October time. So, um, there's a, there's a good chance that they they may take full advantage of the fact that you're that you're still obligated with to them certainly until until the next album comes out. So hopefully we can get you here. Yeah, well, uh, it'll be with EMI. It will, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, whichever label it'll be in, in South Africa, I don't know. It would be yes, it would be EMI. Yeah. Mm. Right. Well, great. Well, th thank you so much, and 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 all the best to say um, with, uh, with with this record in the meantime, and um, well, yeah. and all the best uh, as I say for for the new deal as well. Cheers, Dave. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.